Welcome to Six Strategies to Rebuild Your Brand After a Disaster. You're viewing a video funded in part through a cooperative agreement with the U.S. Small Business Administration. The New Jersey Small Business Development Center's network is also funded by the state of New Jersey and is hosted by Rutgers Business School in Newark and New Brunswick. The New Jersey Small Business Development Center network is an accredited member of the National Association of Small Business Development Centers. You are listening to Lisa Kanda, a marketing consultant and social media strategist at LK Corporate Advisors. I have worked with hundreds of small businesses helping them create and implement strategic marketing plans and also integrating digital technology using social media and online resources. This video will cover six strategies to help you rebuild your brand after a disaster. Because after a disaster, we know many times small businesses have different challenges and need to do additional branding and outreach in order to rebuild their business. As we look at social media and online resources, we know they provide free opportunities for small businesses to increase brand recognition and connect with their customers and clients. So after a disaster, pro small businesses need to proactively keep their business name and brand in the spotlight so they can be found online. So in this video, we're going to look at the importance of search engine optimization and how to get listed in directories. We're going to be strategic about researching where your customers and target market spends their time online and in social media. We'll look at how to create a social media plan of action how to connect and reach your target market, and using social media as a tool for engagement, using best practices and not selling, and of course, increasing the brand trust with reviews and testimonials, and how important that is to building your brand. A PDF download of the slides in this particular program is available to you, so if you want to, it's an opportunity for you to pause this video and make sure you grab the slides as a download so that you can make notes as we go along and do some of the exercises that may be needed. So let's get started. What is a brand? We're looking at how to help your customers find you. Today, social media and online resources are a way to help brands relate with their, uh, with their customers, with their prospects, with their referral sources. The days of a brand simply relating to a logo or a tagline are gone. Instead, your brand is more complex. It's a complex collection of subjective attributes determined by your audience. Now, you may or may not be familiar with the brand guru, Seth Godin, but Seth Godin has a wonderful definition of a brand. A brand is the set of expectations, memories, stories, and relationships that, taken together, account for a consumer's decision to choose one product or service over another. If the consumer, whether it's a business, a buyer, a voter, or a donor, doesn't pay a premium, make a selection, or spread the word, then no brand value exists for that customer. So let's look at this definition and broaden the way we look at our brand as a business. A brand, instead of just a logo or a tagline, is a set of expectations, memories, stories, and relationships. So think about your customers today or the customers that you need to bring into your business. They are going to relate to you by what they expect, the results, or the solutions you're going to solve, or the memories or stories they may have about using your services or your products or the relationship that they have with you. Many times people buy from us because of the relationship we have and they'll be willing to pay a higher cost because the relationship is more important to them. So those things need to be taken into consideration when someone will choose to purchase your product or service. And then the second part of this definition is that if the customer doesn't pay a premium and that premium, either by paying for the actual product or service, or selecting it, or spreading the, roar, spreading the word. So as we know, people talking about you, those third-party recommendations, those testimonials, those referrals, 
the friends and family viral effect you can have sometimes even with social media those are important things as far as building that brand and that brand value so think about this in context of your brand and do these attributes fit for you because that's really important that we look forward in doing this so let's go over the six strategies that you'll need to boost your brand first you need to complete all your business profiles second fish where the fish are and what I mean by that is are you really looking where your target market is online and in social media because that's where you need to spend your time you need to create a plan because without a plan you will fail you need to increase your reach because especially after a disaster you may have lost your customer base they have been displaced because of the disaster or your business has been displaced or had to relocate so you need to change that by increasing your reach you need to use good best practice and social media strategies by being generous and engaging with your customer base online and then we want to look to how do you increase brand trust and some of the strategies that you can proactively do in order to do that so the first thing when we talk about uh, getting your brand out there is looking at how you already show up on social media and in Google so when was the last time you googled your business if at all it's important that you take a proactive stance in seeing how you show up online now when I say this some people think they automatically need to be putting in keywords to find themselves before you even go to that level you need to see how you show up by just putting your business name in Google search by putting your business name in Google search how are you showing up what listings are coming up on that first page as you'll see in the example here my company is called LK corporate advisors and when I do a Google search for my company the first thing that comes up is my uh, company uh, website and in fact it's even a more detailed website now what's important about this is this is because I am on Google Plus and if I had a brick and mortar location which I don't because I'm home based but if I did I had an actual location I could even have a larger piece of real estate on that first page because Google Plus local would also give me the map and the uh, location information but again look at this you see I automatically my website is there underneath that is my LinkedIn company page my LinkedIn personal page YouTube very important because YouTube is owned by Google my Facebook Twitter and then actually the last thing there is a PDF from a healthcare organization that I did a webinar with a short while ago so all these are all the things that show up from my business when I Google by business name and as you'll notice the majority are social media uh, platforms that are showing up so my website comes up first I also have the third party uh, that had my webinar and in between that it is all social media that's the first thing I need to show you is that between directories and social media you can own the first page of Google search if someone looks for your name take some time to do this this did not happen overnight for me but I want you to know it's very very possible for you so I ex highly recommend as one of the first things you need to do is Google your business name and see what shows up now what you may find will show up when you do your Google of your business name is that some of these directories these business type directories may be or some of the things that are going to come up in that search such as Manta or uh, Spokio or Merchant Circle or a few that may show up as well as some other directories so you want to make sure you can take control of those and also of course if you are on social media platforms they may show up so you want to complete your business profiles on all the platforms and the directories that show up now when I say your business profiles what I mean by that is that in each of these areas whether it's a directory or a uh, platform on social media gives you an opportunity to complete your description of your company add your website upload some pictures and maybe even be more descriptive beyond that so possibly adding a map 
or some other additional information. What you want to do is to be consistent across all these business profiles with your information. And one way to do that, I highly recommend, is you create, before you even go here, a one or two page Word document and put all the information about your business in there already. And select the photos, I would recommend at least five, that you're going to use across all your platforms. And make sure you have everything in one place. This way, when you go out to your business profiles, you can just copy and paste it all in there. It makes it very simple for you. But by all means, when we get into your social media platforms, make sure you complete the back end about sections, that uh, profile. And then when you go to your directories, the same thing. Now, the directories is a little bit more challenging sometimes. And you can pay to have someone do it for you, or you can do it manually yourself. And there's one place that you might be able to find more information about that. It's called miles.com forward slash local. Now they do have a paid version of this. It's pretty reasonable uh, if you want to do that. I do not endorse them or have any, uh, any money that comes back to me for this. I just want to give you a resource. But you can also go there and do it yourself. And they'll tell you the different directories that you'll need to go in and update your business profile and claim that information. So you want to make sure that you take the time to do that if you can. It's very, very critical within search that you capture all these profiles and make sure you own them and the correct information is already there. Now a little tip here for search engine optimization because this is what it's all about. People putting your name in there, your company name in there, your business name in search and what shows up. A little tip with this is that your company or business name, your street address and your phone number need to be done exactly the same way. And what I mean by that, if you have a suite, you either spell out the, the word suite or you abbreviate it. If you have a road or drive or even circle, you know, as, a, as where your location is, it's either spelled out or abbreviated consistently across every place on the web, from your website through all your directories and your social media. It's just a little search engine optimization trick that you may find helpful. So you want to make sure you go and complete all your business profiles uh, and, and get them updated. Now some best practices, as I mentioned, you always add photos. If you have videos, add video. And of course, links back to your website. Make sure, I'm hoping you always have a website, and that your website link is there to direct people there where you have more information. You want to add keywords consistently, and that's why I mentioned you might want to create that one or two page document and all the information is there consistently throughout. And if you're looking to see what keywords people may be searching for you, here are some suggestions of where you can find them, some free tools. Uber suggests Merge Words, WordStream, Bing Wordmaster, Webmaster Tools, and also Google AdWords. All these are free tools that you can use in order to find some keywords. So be consistent across all the platforms and your profiles when you do this. And of course, why is this important? Because it makes it easy for people to find you. The Google algorithm puts more emphasis on social media and content. The latest update from Google was called Hummingbird, and that update really put social media profiles and social media presence in the forefront. Of course, you also, also always want to optimize opportunities to create inbound links to your website. And that's why making sure your website is on all these platforms, because it can help you be found in search. Now the second strategy is, of course, fish where the fish are. If you go fishing, do you go to a spot where you know the fish aren't biting? Of course not. So you want to think about this in terms of your target market and your audience. Where are they on social media? And that's where you want to spend your time. So you want to research and discover where, do your, where does your audience swim, so to speak? Where are they in the social media space? Because you want to focus only on those platforms. Social media can be overwhelming, I know that. There is so much information out there and it, it, it's a lot to keep up with. So don't overwhelm yourself, start small, be strategic. Start with the places that you know your audience is. So if you have a predominantly female audience, for example, you may wanna spend some time on Pinterest. If you can make your products and services very visual, 
the Pinterest audience is predominantly female. If, if you have a larger male audience, believe it or not, Google Plus is a larger male audience. Facebook is a little bit of both. So you might, deciding on what type of product or service is, target which one. And so that means in your information that you share, you're thinking about that audience in mind. But by all means, focus on where they spend their time. And as you can look at this slide, some networks are more appealing to different demographics than others. So you want to look at that and play in those spaces first. As I said, fish where the fish are. The third area that you want to be more strategic is in actually creating a plan. You need to get organized, all right? Because if you don't get organized, you're not going to be able to handle all the different things you need to do for your online presence. After a disaster, it's even more important that you get found. And the only way that's going to happen is if you take the time to optimize your, pro your platforms and your directories. Because right now, you'll have the time to do that. These things are free, or it may be very low cost, but the majority of it is free. So taking the time to do it right is what you need to do. So get organized. Get that one or two page overview of your company with all that information together and create that plan. Maybe you'll start with your Google search and find out how you show up and claim those listings. Now sometimes people ask me, well, how do I get rid of them? You can't get rid of them once they're out in the internet space. The goal is to push them further down the page. So you want to own that first page of Google and you want to push those other things that you really don't care about people finding just farther down in search because very few people are going to go beyond the second or third page in search. So you want to own that front page, and that's how we're going to strategize to get there. Get those directories done, and then share content on your website, if you have a blog, in email newsletters, and on your social media platforms. As I mentioned, that Google algorithm pays attention to social media and content. And content can take many forms. We're going to talk about creating a content calendar. And content can be photos, videos, status updates, sharing other people's information. So content can have a lot of different ways of looking at it, but you definitely need to be more conscientious and aware that you have to create these things uh, rather than rely on somebody else to do it for you. Now consistency is really important. You must consistently post on the platforms you choose. That's so much more important because you know what happens when you go to a social media site or go to a blog and you don't see any information there. Maybe the last time that they posted was several months ago or even a year ago. What does that tell you about that brand and that product or service? That they don't care and they're not active. You need to be consistently active on the platforms. It also helps you in search because the more content you're putting out there, the better for search engine optimization. Now, all social media has rules and best practices. And a bigger part of that is that social media is not about selling. It's about engaging and being social. So you need to be aware that you are not on those platforms to sell, 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 but other than to connect and engage with your audience. And the one way to go about doing that is by creating a social media editorial calendar. And I'll explain that to you in just a few minutes. The social media editorial calendar is looking at the platforms that you decided to work on. So I have listed here Facebook, blog, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, Google+, Pinterest, Instagram. Could be even some very specific platforms that are forums that you, you are interested in for your particular target market. But whatever it is, you want to make sure that you list which platforms you're going to start with. So if you're only going to be working maybe with uh, Facebook and YouTube, then you're going to use those two platforms in your calendar. And then you want to look at the elements involved in that. You know, what are the tasks that need to be done? So it could be you need to write the content or find the content. You know, when are you going to do this? Timing is important. Is this going to be something you can do every Monday or Friday? Uh, or once a month or twice a month because with scheduling tools you can put so much of your social media out in advance before you actually have to post it. And then of course tracking. You want to get results. So you want to look at your analytics and your insights and the information to see what's actually working for you. 
And the content development is very important. And I'm going to talk about the best practice for how to do content development. But content, again, could be anything from just a, a quote or an update about an event or something your business is doing, uh, some new products. You're not selling them, but maybe you're talking about the benefits of this product to your target market. Taking some photos uh, is also content or videos, so you need to think about it in that context. And then, of course, time management is so important here. We only have so many hours in a day, and making sure that you manage your time so that you can do this in a, a way that keep, you can keep up with it is important. So you can create that consistency that we've talked about. So you're either looking at daily, weekly, monthly tasks in order to keep up with your social media calendar. So you'll see here what I've given you is a sample of what one calendar may look like. I've divided it into each week of the month. And then if you look down the left column, the type of content. So you say you may be doing blog posts or an e-newsletter or you have events or photos, videos. Maybe you're going to ask questions or do polls or maybe some kind of contest or promotion. So that may be the type of content as an example. And then across the row, each week posting what type of information you're going to be posting. Now the second place there is called shared content. And what that means is everything doesn't have to be original content that you have, that it's good to share other people's information because if you share their information, potentially they will share yours and that's how you get that viral effect we've talked about in the past. So you want to look at your content calendar and create something that you can follow. Now there's a, a, a link there, it's a bit.ly link, LK Editorial Calendar, and you can go there and that's a blog post that I've written about how to create a social media editorial calendar and you can go to that link and actually download a PDF of this uh, particular screenshot and it'll follow a, a tutorial on how to do this and I think that you might find that helpful. Now some best practices in creating this content because many times people say well what do I write about how do I even do this? So look at it this way if you post 10 updates a week so in seven days you post 10 updates. So maybe on three of the days you do two and the rest of the days you do one, which is a good practice. At least one post per day is creating some consistency. 70% of that content needs to add value and be resourceful. You're going to either give a tip or some advice or how-tos like tutorials or link it to an interesting article you've written on your blog or talk about some local news items or events or ask questions, engage your community, ask them what their likes and dislikes are or how they benefit from using your products and service. 70% of that content needs to be that information. It's your original content. 20% is actually sharing other people's content. So by sharing other people's promotions or business pages or tips, you're helping spread their message to your audience. And they'll recognize this and most likely share your content with their platforms and their network. And then last, that 10% can be about your business, your sales, your items, your contest giveaways promotion. So if you look in the big picture, out of every 10 posts, one is actually a sales pitch. One is actually a sales pitch. So that's why you want to look at it this way. Because you don't want to be sell, sell, selling because people will start hiding your feed and not be responsive to you. You want to be engaging, social, and sharing good information that your audience will learn something about your product and service and then want to engage and learn more and then potentially buy from you. Now to increase your reach is the next place. After a disaster, as we mentioned earlier, how will people find you? If you've been displaced, your business has had to move to a new location and or your customer base has been displaced, you need to expand your reach and increase how you're going to find new customers or where your customers have moved to. And to do that, you need to make connections, gain followers, and interact with, with what we call influencers. Now, an influencer is someone who is prominent in your area of your expertise or your brand or your product. And by prominent, I mean it needs to be someone who has a large following already on social media whether it's Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google+, it doesn't matter the platform, 
if you can interact with that influencer, that will help you. So depending on your type of business, if you uh, potentially ha do some maybe home remodeling you're, uh, or also you're an interior designer, it might be helpful for you to get involved with an influencer and by get involved, by following, by commenting, by interacting with their content, an influencer who does that type of work. You know, there are many, many uh, local TV shows or national TV shows that do this type of thing, like This Old House. I think there's another one, American Dream Builder, um, those types of things. You've got some big names out there uh, that also do this work. My example of an influencer comes with uh, a woman I know that I follow called Mari Smith. Mari is definitely the guru when it comes to Facebook marketing and just social media in general. And I follow many of her works and her, and her classes and, and learn a lot from Mari. And at one time, I was working, uh, I was actually attending one of Mari's webinars. And we were, it was a web based online and there was what we call a tweet chat going on at the same time. And I was on the tweet chat following a hashtag uh, which pertained to the webinar. and chatting with some of the folks that were also online about the content that Mari was sharing. And Mari at that point talks about creating a social media editorial calendar. And she wasn't saying she had one, but that she was recommending that you do this. And I had just written that blog post I mentioned earlier to you about creating a social media editorial calendar. So in the tweet chat, I went ahead and put out there, by the way, if you want an example of how to do this, Here's you know, the blog post I just wrote. And people immediately responded, thank you, that was wonderful, and they shared that and retweeted it. But here's where it helped me because I connected with an influencer. Mari has a very large following and she is an influencer in this space. Mari went back and looked at the tweet chat after this event and saw that I had posted this. Mari went ahead and retweeted that post, not just once, but twice over the next 24 hours. What that did for my reach and influence was exponential. All my analytics for my website went through the roof because many people saw that post because Mari sent it out to her audience. That's what it means to deal with an influencer, that you find someone who will share your information. This takes time. It means to do it well. It means to do it properly, but it can make a huge difference in your business if you can connect with an influencer. So you want to think about who are the people in your space that can be an influencer on social media for you and actively create that list, follow them, interact with them, and share their information. Get on their radar screen. And once you do, it may help you in getting their attention to share your information as well. So first of all, make those connections, gain those followers, optimize your presence proactively, increasing your numbers, right? So you just, you still need to go out there and be proactive in gaining likes and followers, building your own tribe so they can spread your message. So, you know, cross-promoting your different platforms, making sure it's on your website so people know that you're on social media, telling people if you in your business that you have social media, making sure it's on your business cards. You need to use all the traditional and other types of marketing in addition to your online to drive people to your social media sites to get that tribe that will follow you. And again, I mentioned researching and engaging with the influencers to maximize your reach. I provide another link here, uh, more about influencers at this bit.ly, which just defines in more depth what an influencer really is. So the next area we want to look at is being generous and engaging. Now what we mean by that is that social media is social. So many people will say, well, I just look, I just lurk, I don't really get involved. And at this point, maybe in the very beginning, you may need to do that so that you understand the audience and you don't jump into something inappropriately. But you need to get involved and reciprocate. You need to make time to be thoughtful and responsive to other people's content. You need to engage in conversations. And you need to share and comment on other pages and blogs. So it's important for you to be proactively involved in other people's content with other people's businesses, on other people's social media 
pages and platforms. You need to put yourself out there. That's part of your social media content uh, strategy is to find those folks that you can best connect with and engage with them. They're not going to engage with you if you don't proactively do that. So be generous and get out there and do a little on yourself. And now I've given you another link again. It's an eight-minute video by Jason Falls, another guru, who explains best practices in engagement. It's well worth the eight minutes. Highly recommend. Go to that bit.ly forward slash define conversation to get more information about that. Now, the other thing we want to do, and the last strategy I'm going to mention, is it called increasing brand trust. So when we talk about brand trust, what does that really mean? When we looked at that definition that Seth provided. Brand trust is about people talking about you, about engaging with you, about relating to you, either through stories or experiences, but they trust your brand. They trust you as a product or service that they can use and experience a good relationship with. So part of that is to proactively ask for testimonials and reviews proactively ask people to talk about you and sometimes that's a little uncomfortable but if you don't ask people they may just think it's not important many people the, the evangelists we call them who automatically do that will do that anyway but if you want to get a better reach so more people see how you help them you might need to be a little bit more proactive and ask people to do that for you now you also need to monitor all feedback that's posted about your brand especially on other websites. Yelp is very big and many people use Yelp to talk about uh, their experiences with uh, brands. You want to make sure that you go to these websites, Yelp, TripAdvisor, Google Plus Local, these are three of the bigger ones. If there's any other ones you know of that are specific to your particular uh, product or service, I know there's some other restaurant uh, sites out there, etc. You want to make sure that you create your own accounts there and that you own your business listing again that's part of those directories we talked about earlier but that you monitor them so if you create that business listing and some of them you can actually have it set where a notification is sent to you via email when someone writes a review so that you'll know to go and check what they've written because if you have any negative reviews you need to immediately handle those negative reviews you need to find out what happened and if it's valid or not and respond to it and make sure that person who put that negative review is taken care of in the appropriate manner. But of course you also want to monitor the positive reviews because if people give you positive feedback you want to acknowledge that as well and thank them. People like to be acknowledged and thanked so monitoring any reviews that are posted, any feedback you receive online is a very important part of your strategy to increase brand trust. I give some help on how to ask for reviews in that link below, bit.ly.com, bit.ly forward slash ask for reviews. So go to that link and get some information on how to get reviews. An important part, though, of asking for reviews is based on research. Oops, let me go back one more. And how powerful this really could be. So the power of recommendations comes through some research that was done actually in 2009, and I think some of the results are probably higher even today as far as how people depend on reviews. If you're going to go and purchase a product, so let's put you in the, in the seat of the customer. You're going to be the customer, and you've decided that you want to buy a product or service. And for an example, we're going to say a new LCD TV. It's a pretty big product uh, offering right now. Lots of people are buying them. And you say, okay, I want to buy an LCD TV, and I'm going to do some research. So there are two ways you probably will go about doing this. The first way is that you're going to ask people that you know, your family, your friends, your colleagues, who may have recently purchased this or have them already. And you're going to ask for their opinion, aren't you? You're going to say, what did you buy? What's your experience with it? Did you like it? Would you recommend that I purchase that TV? Now, the second way you may do this, or in addition to, actually, of asking your friends and colleagues and family, is that you're going to go online. Most of us, when we go to purchase a product or service, will go to the Internet and Google it, right? So you're going to Google LCD TV, 
and all the different sites will come up, whether it's Amazon, Walmart, Best Buy, any of those will come up. And what will you do? You're going to go to each of those sites and do probably some price comparison. But something else is also a part of this picture. You're going to read the reviews, aren't you? You're going to look at what other people have said about those TVs they've purchased. Did they have a good experience, a bad experience? You're going to look at the stars, correct? There's always a star rating. And you're going to take that into effect some, you know, of how you're going to make that decision, aren't you? You know, maybe you have 15 reviews and 14 of them are wonderful and one of them may be not so good. And you're going to have that weigh into your decision. Or it may have that 14 of them are horrible reviews. And that's also going to impact and influence if you purchase that particular TV, correct? Now here's where the research comes in. This Nielsen Global Online Survey said that 90% of online shoppers trust the opinions from people they know. So that goes into that first category we talked about. People you know and that you ask for their opinion will have a 90% influence on that opinion of you purchasing that or not. But I think what's most important here is that 70% of people will trust recommendations from unknown users online. 70% of us trust the reviews that we read on those websites I just mentioned. And it influences our decision whether to purchase or not. And we all do it. And you do not know those people, do you? So let's put this into context as you, the business owner, and you have a product or service to sell. As the business owner, do you give your customers the opportunity to read reviews or testimonials or recommendations that your customers have written about you? So that if they go to your website or your social media platforms, are there reviews there or testimonials from your current customers? Because the research shows here that that will influence how they purchase from you. And it will have an influ influence on if they purchase your, your product or service or not. So going forward, it's important that you have a strategy in place to collect testimonials, reviews, and recommendations and make sure they're current and added to your social media platforms and your website on a continuous basis. So in conclusion, one of the things I really want to stress is how important it is for you to take the time to engage and create your social media uh, presence and your presence online through directories. This is not something that happens overnight. It takes time. It takes several months in, in many cases, and you need to dedicate the time to do that. If you're expecting quick results, you will be very disappointed because it takes time for the Google search engines and the, and the robots and the algorithms to get it in place. It takes time for you to build your presence so people can find you. It takes time for you to get your calendar in, in order and to start implementing all the tactics that we've discussed in this uh, video. So be aware it takes time for you to do the things you need to do to implement a strong strategy to not only recuperate from the disaster, but also expand your reach, find your new customers, and build your brand larger than it was before the disaster, and so that can truly impact your business and your products going forward. By taking a proactive, strategic approach, you can develop and increase your brand relevance and your value proposition. Thank you for taking the time to view this video. For more information, visit www.sba.gov or www.njsbdc.com. Thanks for listening to Six Strategies to Rebuild Your Brand After a Disaster.